Hi, I don't know if you saw the first little story about Ko. Uh, he was a Manahuni, a little, a little guy that looked just like this. If you haven't, let me tell you a little bit about it. I have a book inside, it says, To Debbie Dale Clift, August 26, 1965, bought in Kailua, Kona, Hawaii from mother. My mom um, and dad spent a couple months, I think they stayed about quite a while with uh, friends in uh, on the big island of Hawaii. But before they were there, they were in um, Kailua or they were on Kauai. And my mom made a friend that worked at the restaurant and her name was Elizabeth. And after we, she got home from Hawaii, um, I got these two beautiful dolls in the mail and they were handmade by a friend of hers and, that made dolls in a doll factory. And they're, whoops, this little one's dress is falling down. Sorry. Um, and they're Menahuni dolls. And those are the little people that live on Kauai. You can study more about it. But for today, we're going to do a story about the birthday luau. And it's about this little boy here. Let's just get started right now, shall we? It was a beautiful, sunshiny day when Ko woke up. He opened first one eye and then the other, and then he closed both of them. Even little Manahuni boys liked to snuggle in bed. It was so nice and warm in that bed. He couldn't bear to get up. And then he opened one eye again, and he looked at the pretty patterns the sun was making on one wall. And then he other, opened the other eye and saw different patterns on the other side of the wall. This is just wonderful, he said. If I lie here in bed very quietly, no one will know I'm awake and I won't have to help my brothers and sisters. They'll all think I'm still asleep. You might remember from the last story that he had a lot of brothers and sisters. That's why his mommy couldn't even come up with a name for him. Well, soon he felt he had to stretch, so he stretched. And then his nose began to itch, so he quietly scratched his nose. That seemed to make his foot itch, so he quietly scratched his foot. Ah, said Ko to himself, mmm, that feels good. Ko, Ko, I heard you moving around, said his mother's voice. Please come and help your brothers and sisters. Don't forget, you have many things to do today before the luau tonight. Leaping, oola, oola, Ko exclaimed, I forgot about the luau. I'm coming right now, mother, wait for me. And with that, he leaped out of bed and ran straight outside to help the family. This was going to be a very special luau because it was Ko's father's birthday. All the Menahunis that lived on the entire island were invited. It would be a very big feast with all the goodies that Ko so loved. Poi, many different kinds of ia, which means fish, roast pig, pineapple, coconut, guava, lily koi, poha, which is a berry, papaya, and every other fruit that grew on the island of Kauai. But best of all, he would be able to eat all the ko sugar cane his little stomach could hold. And there would be singing and dancing and presents. There would be all kinds of wonderful presents. For Ko's father was the most famous and best liked of all the Manahunis. And little Ko would be there to help his father open them all. What a treat this will be, he said to himself, for everyone knows the next best thing to actually receiving a present is to get to open somebody else's presents. Well, little Ko ran from one place to another trying to help with the luau. I want to help. I want to help. Who has something for me to do? Let me do that. I can carry that. I can mix that. I'll carry the water. Let me do it. He wanted to help with every job. So little Ko helped everyone. He helped his big brother Kimo carry wood for the fire. Kimo said the wood was too heavy for that little Minahuni boy to carry. And he was right. Sure enough, Ko dropped a great big log. Boom! Right on Kimo's toe. And then he helped his big sister Iwa carry a large pot of water for cooking. Iwa said it was too heavy for such a little Minahuni boy to carry. Sure, she was right. Sure enough, he tripped and he spilled water all over his sister. And next he thought he should help mother. He wanted to help her stir the pot of poi she was mixing. He ran to where she was sitting, grabbed the spoon and climbed up on her knee 
and started stirring the poi with her. That's right, he leaned too far over. <coughs> he fell into the pot. Oh my goodness. Can you picture a little Manahuni boy after he was pulled out of a thick pot of sticky poi? His mother knew that poor Koi had tried so hard to help everyone. He was just too little for the jobs and rather than hurt his feelings, she had allowed him to find out for himself. Koi's mother spent a while washing Poi out of his ears and eyes and nose and all over his hair and face and finally said, Ko, you've worked so hard and helped everyone. Why don't you go rest? Go sit under that large hibiscus flower or take a ride on your turtle. So little Ko, who was very tired from everyone, played with Tutu until his mother called him to get dressed for the luau. He dressed as fast as he could, and then he put a beautiful yellow flower lay on his head and around his neck. He ran to stand next to his father to help him greet the guests as they arrived. As they arrived, they all walked up. This is his father and to his father and had great gifts and said, Hau oli lahanu au, and gave him a special birthday gift. He received many beautiful presents of carved wood. He also received many beautiful lays. Some brought gifts of carved stone. Some gave him capes that would be impossible to wear because they were made out of birds. He received so many things, we can't say all of them, but Ko thought one gift was the best of all, a large pot of something he had never heard of. It was pineapple flavored poi. No one had ever eaten poi with any flavor, so when his father let him taste it, Ko could not believe how good it was. It was even better than sugar cane, he thought. Ko's father put all the presents into a hollow log that they lived in. Oh my goodness, can you imagine living in a hollow log? Oh my goodness. And then they went out to the table to eat. The table was so long that if you sat at one end and looked at the other end, you couldn't even see it. All the many hoonies, all wearing berry and flower lays around their neck were sitting there. The table looked just like a garden and so much food. Ko didn't think they could ever eat it all up. When the Menahunis were through eating, everyone danced and sang, that is, except for the little Menahuni boy named Ko. He was still hungry, well, not hungry for food, but hungry for something special like the pineapple flavored poi. So Ko snuck away from the luau and slipped into his house. Even though his father said no one was to touch anything, any of his gifts, Poe took fingerful after fingerful. After many, many trips like that to the house, his stomach started to hurt. He got very ill. In fact, he had a bad stomach ache. Uh-oh, he said. What is wrong with me? I've never felt so sick. I wonder what I could have eaten. He called loudly from the house. Mother, come and help me. My stomach hurts something awful. Oh, Ko, she said, what is the matter with you? What did you eat that would make you feel so sick? And while she was helping him, she glanced over to the pot with the special birthday poi and she saw it was clean and shiny new. On the inside, on the outside, there were little smudges of poi. Ko, she said softly. Did you eat your father's special pineapple poi? And Ko said, no, no, I didn't even look at it. I didn't touch it. That cannot be what's making me sick. Ko's mother said nothing more, but made a bitter tasting drink for him. And she made him drink every bit of it. This drink will make you feel better, she said. Now you lie down and try to go to sleep. When you wake up, you'll feel better. And believe it or not, his stomach did start to feel better. And he looked at that big poi pot and he saw all the sticky fingerprints and smudges and he decided to start to feel very sad because he had lied to his mother. 
He was so sleepy that before he could think about it too long, he fell asleep. Hey there, Co, said a strange voice. I wanna talk to you. And there right in front of Ko, Ko was a great big taro root standing next to the special poi pot. It had a big yellow lay around the top of it. How could a taro root stand up on the table and have a lay and talk? Ko could not believe it. Hey there, you Ko, said the voice again. Pay attention and listen to me when I'm talking to you. Didn't you learn your manners? I'm sorry, said Ko, but I've never seen a taro root that could talk. And I thought I must have been hearing things. Are you really talking? How can you? And do you have a name? Because if you're really talking, then I have to have your name. My mother told me, don't talk to strangers. And leaving Ula, Ula, you are very, very strange. I'm talking to you, all right, said the Taro Root. And if you must know, my name is Tio Taro. You can call me Tio, but I'm not here to just talk. I'm here because I was lying outside the house on the ground. I heard your, you, Tell your mother you didn't eat any of that special pineapple poi. I didn't, said Ko. I never even touched it once. So, said Tio in a deep voice, you didn't eat any of the special poi? Without waiting for an answer, he started to tip the big poi pot on its side. Ko's eyes got bigger and bigger and wider and wider when a thick, sticky stream of poi began to pour from the pot. Down the table went over the floor, and it began to look like a big pink blanket. Teal, screamed Ko. Stop that. You're spilling the poi. It's making a big mess all over the floor. My parents will be so angry. I'll be really punished. Ko ran all around the room looking for something to use to scoop to clean up the mess. He tried to do it with a shell, but the more he scooped, the more there was to scoop up. It just never stopped pouring out of the pot. Tio, Ko shouted, you stop spilling that poi this minute. I will never get the room cleaned up before my mother sees it. Ko was so angry, he stomped his foot. Curse splash, he forgot there was poi all over the floor. When he stomped the foot, the poi splashed all over his face. Tio laughed and laughed and kept tipping that pot further and further. Soon, poor Ko... Ko was walking in poi up to his ankles. Tio, I'm sorry I told the falsehood. Stop spilling the poi. I promise I'm going to go tell my mother and father the truth. Even if I do get a spanking, please, Tio. But Tio kept laughing and poor Ko was very tired now. It was too much to try to pick up all the mess. So he tried to take the pot away from Tio. But just as he reached for the poi pot, crash! Down came the whole pot and it broke in a million pieces. Tio had given one last hard push at that moment. Ko took one look at the mess and saw he would never be able to clean it up. He needed help. Mother, mother, there's been an awful accident. I need some help. All of a sudden, someone was shaking him gently. What's wrong? Little one said his mother's voice. Ko opened his eyes and looked around quickly for Tio. Tio was gone and so was the mess on the floor. He looked at his feet and they were clean too. Well, almost clean, but at least they weren't covered with poi. In fact, there was no poi anywhere. He must have fallen asleep and dreamed all of that. What a relief, thought Ko. Mother, said Ko, I told you a falsehood. It was a very bad lie. I did eat father's birthday poi, but I'm sorry. And I'll never do anything like that again, I promise. I know you were not telling me the truth about the poi, said his mother. You did, said Ko, how did you know? Because there was pineapple poi all over your little nose and your fingers, and I could see it. Ko, Ko felt so much better he had told the truth. Mother took him by the hand and led him outside to join all the other little Menahuni children. And they made a big circle and danced. And Ko danced and danced and danced and sang. And the birthday, birthday luau ended when the night was over and morning started to appear over the mountains.
Now, little special story. It is true that the root of the taro plant is used to make poi. The root is pounded to a paste and then put aside to stet and get thick. It is a very valuable plant in Hawaii. The Hawaiians eat poi at the dinner table, just like other people would eat vegetables or rice or spaghetti along with meat. When you visit Menahuni land, you will surely be invited to a luau and you will see a pot of poi on the table. And if it's pineapple flavored poi, remember, don't eat too much of it. It's going to make you sick. And that's the end of our story for today. We still have one more that I'm going to read you about little Ko, but that's all for now. Thank you. Bye-bye. I love you.